parts in search for perfect time. You know, I've been at this for a, a while. I've always just done it myself. Yeah. And outside of the music business, I've always been kind of, sh not shunned, but just not, not even a part of it. There's a really no perfection. Always done my own thing and just toured and play, tried to play, and you know it's the it's the idea that this town of Los Angeles, as this kind of star-making, polished um, thing, that I don't really fit into that. And so it's that idea that yeah, but maybe. I still have a chance to do it my way, and, you know, make something of myself and not necessarily with their help, but just kind of uh, that there's room for honest things. I am blind. You are blind. Born and raised on country western, you know, a lot of the Waylon Jennings. Johnny Cash, Willie Nelson, George Jones, and I was really kind of reared on that. You know, that's what my parents listened to, and that's what I listened to. We hit the asphalt howling like hellfire. There's no time to get weak in the knees. I mean, I was 19, maybe 20, um, and went up to a friend's house, and his dad played a little guitar, and he played, uh, you know, was real into John Prine and Bob Dylan. And I kind of went immediately and went and bought a you know, just a second-hand pawn shop guitar. I kind of went home almost immediately and started writing songs. You know, he wrote down on a piece of paper, you know, two, three chords. And I took those two, three chords and started writing songs, really for no, with no agenda. No idea that, oh, I wanted to be a songwriter or it was just kind of, uh, you know, instead of learning other people's songs, I just started writing songs. I would send out these bootlegs that I would record on a cassette tape player. So I would send out these 10 song, 20 song bootlegs for somebody's birthday or I'd send it for Christmas or something like that, send it out to a few friends. And somehow a friend of mine worked in kind of the surf industry and it started circulating throughout uh, kind of surfers in Southern California. This guy Chris Malloy called me up, who's a um, filmmaker, you know, definitely kind of helping kind of uh, take the whole surfing movies into more of a artistic kind of realm, you know. And yeah, he called me up out of nowhere. I didn't know him from, from Adam, you know, and uh, you know, asked if he could use a song in his, in his movie. Biggly, biggly, bye -bye, I was baited and I made the prize. Oh, to start the mark of my demise. Played a show. Um, you know, that they had set up and did the opening and I realized, oh man, this is something that maybe I should be doing, you know? It seems like it's resonating with, with a lot of people and people are curious about what else I'm doing and so I, I start touring a little bit, you know, do some open mics here and there, play at a dive bar. I bought a cup, I lost my wife in 73. It starts to circulate, but it's all word of mouth. It's all on my own. It's all do it yourself. Um, a lot of it's me in a car, um, which is almost similar to how it is now. A lot of it, some of it is, you know. So I packed up a bag and went. I just started wandering. I... Me with selling the merch, me, you know, it's just one guy, kind of troubadour style, trying to build it. You know, then I started recording real albums. You know, I get some supporting opportunities. I get over to Japan, I get to Australia. And you're playing in front of 1,500 people, 500 people, 1,000 people, 5,000 people.
mean, this whole period, I mean, the, the reality of it is I've probably been doing it for maybe almost 10 years. And it's been a slow kind of grow, you know? Once Upon a Time in the West is, is that my idea of that title is this, um, the idea that there's all this nostalgia in it, um, but then there's political themes and it's kind of, it's a very kind of an American story. It's not necessarily Americana. I mean, there's definitely country elements and kind of roots music elements to it. Um, but as a whole, I think it's more American music. Sons of Anarchy started um, in 2010, basically, and they ended up using three songs last year, used a song this year, and then I'm, now I'm doing something for the finale. It affected, uh, you know, the sale, album sale, 10, 15 fold of what you were doing before. Everything new, but I wish it was true. You know, a lot of bands kind of have their demographic as that. Is, is one thing kind of, and mine seems to be very broad, but there's certain elements I think to the songwriting that it's there's something kind of for everybody, you know, really. Without your damn 